In this lesson, I'm going to quickly go over master sequence in order to go over how to create a burden and also show off the cinematic viewport. So let's jump in and get started. So I've got a master sequence already, which we will use, but I want to quickly point it out and talk about the master sequence versus the level sequence. The key difference is that with a master sequence, you'll have separate sequences that will act as shots. Now you can do all of your editing in a level sequence, but the advantage for a master sequence that I've been encountering is that, well, potentially you could collaborate with people, but in addition to that, you get separate shots, which then can turn into named metadata when you output burn tracks. Um, and then quickly we can turn on the cinematic viewport so we can show that off first. We've got the same set of controls that show up in the sequencer, which is kind of nice. Um, I prefer personally just using the up arrow and you can control G to go to a certain keyframe, but it's nice to have this if you want. Um, in addition, you can point out that you've got the different composition overlays. Here's a rule of thirds if you want to frame up for that. Um, there's also action save and title save, custom save. So I'm going to turn these all off actually, but I wanted to make sure everybody knew about that. If in the master sequence, once you've created one, let's do a new one just to show it off. Uh, we've got cinematics, add new master sequence, and the default is five. We've got the, you give it a name, a suffix, and this is the number of shots that you think you'll need. If you want more shots, you can create additional level sequences and drop those into a master. So um, in addition, I prefer to put the first shot number at where I am and I increment by one. And also the number of padding, I I think four is a little excessive for me unless you're going over thousands of shots. So then you can create that. And the if you haven't done master sequences before, you can double click to go in. Um, and then once you're in that shot, you can, the default, just to confirm uh, if you haven't used spawn versus possessed, um, you can, I'll, I'll put a link into my other videos, but this creates a spawned workflow, meaning the cameras when you're using them in the sequence will spawn and then go away versus when you're dragging in cinematic cameras and you're using them, those are, that's called the possessed workflow. You're taking over control of that camera. Okay, to get out of the specific shot, you can go up the hierarchy. The other way you can just click here and go into any of the shots that you want. So it's a, a nice workflow. Uh, you can also just uh, confirm it's some of the same hotkeys for uh, trimming and cutting. So like control, um, you got to click on the shot itself, but control period will trim a shot and control backslash will cut. And then with the master track, you can slide this all around, which is nice. All right. So now let's go over doing a burn in. So I've already created a, a sequence. So I'm going to double click on that and we've got the sequence set up and I'm going to hit enter just to make sure that this is the right sequence. Yep, it is. Now that this is running, we can go here to render this out to a movie and where the burn in options are is under the advanced here. And we can say use burn in. Now I'll put a link in the video for if you want to do an advanced burn in, but there's a bunch of metadata that will come out and this is the default metadata. And you can create your own custom one if you wanna go in and go into UMG and set that up. But this is probably more than I need. And specifically what I want my students to be using is the shot name. So it makes it a lot easier to critique in dailies if you're doing a bunch of shots and you're saying, okay, well, shot seven is, you know, that's where I wanna talk about. And then also it's useful for some of the information about the camera. Okay, so once you've got that turned on and set up, you just hit capture movie. It's gonna ask you to save. And you can see all the metadata showing up on top here. We'll open that up in a second as soon as it's done. It's just three shots. Great, 
We'll open the capture folder, bring it over. I'm gonna just pause this for a second. You can see all the metadata. Here's the camera. I should use a 35 millimeter lens and here's the shot number. So those are the specific ones that I want to be using a lot. All right, well, that'll wrap things up. Thanks so much for watching.